This episode of Transformation Talk is brought to you by our friends at FNX. FNX is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. Go to fnxfit.com for all your supplement needs. Use code GETRIGHT and save 15% off your order. Hey guys, welcome back to Freestyle Friday. Uh, so on today's episode of Freestyle Friday, still wanting to uh, share with you guys some of the memories of, of my wrestling career and experiences back from the early days and, and some of the funny stories um, that go along with that. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, my first big break. So um, as I told you before, I trained with uh, Jerry Hall uh, for a little while down on the lake in front of the single wide putting the ring up every day and uh, I, don't, I don't remember if I mentioned it or not but we, we literally uh, Ricky Regal and I used to, to ride down to the lake every day and pull that ring out from under Jerry's deck and put it together and and train for hours and hours on end until it just got so dark that we couldn't even see the train and then we would take the ring back down and slide it back under his deck and in the process of doing this uh, the only promoter that we were um, wrestling for was Jerry's promotion and uh, they were only running maybe once a month if that so over a, a probably a six month period from the time I first started training um, for and then that first opportunity that I had to wrestle Desperado in my first match uh, from from that first match for the next six months or so we may have been able to wrestle three or four more times and uh, we started off as the Bruce Brothers Stump and Punch and as I told you grew into the Lightning Express and um, as the Lightning Express we were still borrowing gear from some of the other guys um, again wrestling was a very tight-knit very secretive society and you couldn't just go online and order wrestling trunks and boots and knee pads and those kind of things. And there weren't guys in the dressing room that um, made that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you just, uh, and nobody would tell us where to buy it. So, you know, they would just, don't worry about that yet. You just continue to come back and prove yourself and, and we'll, we'll let you know when it's time for you to get your own gear. But right now you just keep doing what you're doing. So we, uh, we wrestled for, for those six months without having anything. And we decided we, we kind of wanted to step our game up a little bit as the Lightning Express. Um, everybody remembers the Rock and Roll Express. And that's kind of, uh, just to be honest with you guys, the Rock and Roll Express was uh, kind of who I wanted to be as a kid um, watching wrestling. I had, I had some idols and some favorites, obviously. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, uh, Jimmy Valiant, um, Ric Flair, uh, all those guys, uh, Superstar Billy Graham, um, all those guys kind of stood out to me as people that I enjoyed watching uh, and, and liked and admired but tag team was where I wanted to be and the, and the reason was I grew up on a mill hill and all the mill hill girls they, they didn't have uh, a lot of clothes or anything as far as designer clothes but they all had Rock and Roll Express t-shirts so my thought process and theory was if I become a famous tag team then I'll be able to get some of the girls so <laughs> it was always a goal to be a tag team and it, and it was kind of always a goal to be a tag team uh, with Ricky Regal is again I told you we grew up best friends and thought we were wrestlers from the time uh, you know we were old enough to really even talk about it and uh, jumping on people in the back room at Bilo and jumping on people in the, the parking lot at the high school and just anytime we could jump on people and wrestle that, that's just what we did and we, we were a tag team and, and that's what we wanted to be so we were ready to evolve into the Lightning Express and uh, we wanted to have our own gear, man. We wanted to, to know how to do it, but it wasn't time for that yet. But Jerry did feel like it was time for our first big break. So he wanted to introduce us to a wrestling promoter that ran shows more frequently and we could get more experience. So we uh, we get together one Saturday night and uh, we go down and we pick Jerry up and we load him up with some schlitz. <laughs> and we get in, the, get in the car and we go to Seneca, South Carolina to meet this big time wrestling promoter. Jerry was telling us all about, this guy runs weekly shows 
and uh, he does uh, how shows, and he's got a, a training facility, and he's going to take our game to the next level, and he's the man that can do it, and he's the man we need to meet. So we go down, and we end up uh, in Westminster, South Carolina, actually, at uh, downtown Westminster in this old brick building, and it was the IWF training grounds, and we met the promoter, the big-time promoter, Bobby Holbrooks. And that was our that was our first big break was going down and meeting Bobby Holbrooks and he's telling us uh you know about how his shows are run and what he expects of his guys and um, you know we're really just kind of uh, enamored by it all to be honest with you we're like wow this guy runs shows almost every week um, he does shows there at his building in in Westminster and he's telling us that he draws crowds of a couple hundred people there and they go and they do house shows in Northeast Georgia and Western North Carolina and some more of the upstate of South Carolina, and they draw hundreds and thousands of people at these shows. And again, there's no internet, guys. I mean, you can't go and do that kind of research and find out um, what's really going on. So we're excited, and, and Bobby wants to show us a good time. So he's like, you know, he's kind of um, in the recruiting process of us, if you will. He's seen some old VHS tapes that Jerry sent him of us, and. He knew we were green, but he saw potential, and he's already telling us these plans that he has for us within his organization. So he's kind of trying to uh, court us a little bit, if you will. So he wants to show us a good time. He said, well, let's go have a beer. And we were like, well, we can't go anywhere in public and have a beer because we're only 19 years old. And, and so he says, oh, well, I know where we can go. So y'all follow me. So we get in the car and we follow Bobby, and we end up behind the Ingalls and Seneca at the, the fair. <laughs> <laughs> so so this big time wrestling promoters idea of uh of showing us a good time and showing us what it's like to be a star is is taking these two 19 year old kids to the fair and, and <laughs> letting us ride fair rides for free so uh we didn't sign a big nike deal or or anything like that but we got we got to ride to tilt world a couple times for free and i think we got a hot dog or a corn dog or something and then so we uh we 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 felt good about our first big opportunity coming. This was gonna be the stepping stone for the biggest things in our career. And the next thing we needed, we, we needed some wrestling gear. So uh, we asked Bobby, we was like, hey man, you're a promoter and nobody will tell us, uh, we don't have any boots, we don't have any tights. We, we're borrowing stuff from some of the guys that, that work with Jerry. And uh, where, do, where can we go get some boots and some, and some wrestling tights? And he says, uh, well, you know, you can just take, uh, take some spandex tights you know that you can buy it anywhere like people wear to the gym and, and you can make wrestling tights out of them and you can just buy any old knee pads and put them up under there because nobody will see the knee pads anyway he said and then uh i believe uh harris sporting goods over in seneca we passed it on the way in he says i, I i'm pretty sure they got some wrestling boots last time i was in there and he looks over at jerry he says jerry um isn't that where you, where you got your boots from? Is it Harris Sporting Goods over in Seneca? And Jerry says, oh, yeah, 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 they got them over there. They got them over there. So <laughs> the next day we go out and we go to Kmart and uh, we get us a pair of uh, spandex tights, uh, a couple pairs of knee pads. And, uh, you know, again, we're Rock and Roll Express uh, marks, if you will, <laughs> wanting to be popular and famous among the girls. So... We got us some bandanas and some scarfs and different things that would have fringe hanging off of them. And we tied those things around those tights everywhere. We tried those on. Man, we really liked the way we looked when, when we go to Seneca and get these wrestling boots at Harris Sporting Goods over in Seneca. Man, we're going to be at the top of our game. So we, uh, we take off and we, we drive back down to Seneca and we go into Harris Sporting Goods and we're walking around and we're looking all over the store and we see... Uh, you know, we see all this hiking gear and all these uh, uh, baseball and softball outfits and cleats and football pads and jerseys and shoulder pads and helmets. And we don't see any wrestling boots and we, we don't see any wrestling trunks. We don't, we don't see any of that anywhere. So finally, this old fella comes up and he says, uh, can I help you boys? And we were like, yes, sir. We're looking for some wrestling boots. And he said, wrestling boots? He said, uh, well, let me, come with me. So he carries us over. And he shows us like high school wrestling shoes that they had. And we were like, no, sir, no, sir, not, not those. We're looking for, for like taller boots, like, you know, maybe made out of leather or something. He says, well, um, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, well, we met this wrestling promoter 
uh, over on Westminster, and he told us you guys had wrestling boots, you know, like the kind that Ric Flair and those guys wear on TV, and the, the guy bust out laughing. He says, oh, he got y'all too, huh? And we're like, what do you mean? He said, you're about the third or fourth people that have come in here over the last year or so looking for wrestling boots. So that was our first rib, and the wrestling world experience was our, our gauntlet to uh, West uh, Seneca, South Carolina, the Harris Sporting Goods, to buy our professional wrestling boots. So we decided we weren't going to uh, we weren't going to leave there empty-handed. And uh, long story short, they had some Everlast boxing boots in there, and in about seven, eight inches up the calf, and and they were white, and we were like, we're going to make these work. So we we bought some Everlast boxing boots from Harris Sporting Goods in Seneca, South Carolina some tights from Kmart, tied some bandanas around them, hid some uh, uh, cheap knee pads underneath those uh, tights, and uh, the Lightning Express was born. And uh, that was our gear, that's how we started out. Nobody knew. Uh, back then, come to find out later, you know, after we'd been around for a little while and we'd kind of proved ourselves in, uh, in our, um, our uh, desire to learn, and um, the things that we had picked up on and the things that we had gotten better at and some of the um, some of the spots that we pulled off and things that we did, uh, they finally wisened us up. And uh, so in 1989, the only place, pretty much the only place in the world that you could buy real wrestling boots was from B-Bar A um, Boots in Arizona, I believe it was. I'm pretty sure they were in Arizona. And K&H Wrestling Wear out of Indiana. And so finally somebody wisened us up and gave us those two phone numbers and we were able to get our first real gear. Um, but, <laughs> so our, our first uh, big time experience with meeting a promoter was a, a trip to the Seneca uh, Fair and uh, <laughs> then our, our first wrestling gear was bought at uh, Kmart and Harris Sporting Goods in Seneca, South Carolina. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got as big of a kick out of it as I do now looking back on it. Man, we were gullible. Um, we, uh, we really just wanted to become pro wrestlers worse than anything in the world. And uh, we, <laughs> we, uh, we took some bumps and knocks along the way. And I'll tell you some more um, stories as we go on Freestyle Friday. But uh, you guys keep your head up. Any of you guys that are watching this that are new to wrestling, you guys have no idea. Um, the things that you have access to now that we had no idea of back then, um, not knowing our uh, wrist watch from a wrist lock and uh, wh where to go and what to do. But uh, we proved ourselves. We hung in there. We had a pretty good longevity. Um, and the Lightning Express uh, in the upstate of South Carolina, western North Carolina, northeast Georgia territory in the early 90s and late 80s, we became part of probably um, one of the most successful independent tag teams on the scene in that area during that time, and I don't think anybody can dispute that. But we started out putting a ring together <laughs> every night after work, in the dark, bumping on uh, plywood with uh, just a little bit of carpet, uh, no canvas, no padding, um, and a lot of times we didn't waste our time putting the carpet on it and uh, having to take that ring, put it up, and take it back down every night and make sure it was out of the elements and driving back home and going to work the next day, borrowing gear, um, not even knowing where we could buy gear from, going on a wild goose chase to Seneca, South Carolina, ending up with uh, tights from Kmart and boxing boots from Harris Sporting Goods. Um, but we stuck it out because we had a dream and we believed in ourselves, and we knew um, that one day the doors would open for us and we would be able to do the things that we were able to do and enjoy. Did we make it to the level of the Rock and Roll Express? No. But did we have our time in the spotlight and did we enjoy ourselves? Yes, we did. And would I do it all again? Yes, I would. There were good times. I enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed this Freestyle Friday. And I will tell the prison story, and it's not what most of you guys think, but I will tell the prison story. It is hilarious, and that will probably be um, maybe even next week's episode. You guys have a great weekend. God bless you. Stay tuned for Transformation Talk. Thank you again for your support. If you haven't already and you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out, I will get better as I go through this. I promise you, this is new to me, um, but I'm learning and in just as much passion as I had in learning um, how to become a professional wrestler and uh, eventually making it all the way to having a couple of spots on the WWE and doing the things that I was able to do in wrestling and having a career that spanned over a couple of decades, um, three decades to be exact. Um, I will, uh, I'll get better at this too. 
Um, want to put out content that um, inspires you, encourages you, motivates you, and entertains you. Um, so Transformation Talk on Tuesdays, Transformation Talk Tuesdays. Freestyle Friday will continue to go with two episodes a week. Um, please like what you like, comment on what you like, comment on what you don't like. Let me tell you what you'd like to hear about. Tell me what you'd like to hear about. Let me tell you how I feel about certain things. And uh, let's get some conversations going. Uh, let's engage with each other and uh, help me to get the word out about Transformation Talk, especially um, as much as I enjoy Freestyle Friday and trying to be entertaining and tell you guys some of the, <laughs> some making fun of myself for the most part and some of the things that I'll be talking about on Freestyle Friday going further forward will be uh, more wrestling, current events, different things, different topics, but lighthearted stuff. But transformation is my passion now in my life. Um, having gone through my own transformation, I'm very passionate about helping other people achieve transformation, success, body, mind, and spirit. I hate depression. I hate anxiety. I hate um, people feeling trapped in certain situations in their life. And it's my passion to help people overcome those things and find a better way through transformation. So if you guys know anybody that can benefit from that and you have any ideas on content for that, please feel free to let me know that as well. Like and subscribe. And uh, if you don't mind, share these videos with people you, that you think could use them. Thanks again. God bless. Have a great weekend. Please stay tuned.